and Schedule 2 stand part. Mr Chair. I call the Honourable Minister Georgina De Heo. Uh, Mr Chair, thank you. Part 4 of the Bill amends the Financial Reporting Act 1993. Uh, the Bill provides that issue of financial statements must be audited by a licensed auditor or a registered audit firm. Uh, part 4 also regenerates the Accounting Standards Review Board as the new External Reporting Board. The External Reporting Board, consisting of between four and nine members, is responsible for preparing and issuing financial reporting standards, preparing and issuing auditing and assurance standards, including professional and ethical standards, developing and implementing a strategy for tiers of financial reporting from different classes of reporting entities, and giving directions or guidance on accounting policies that have authoritative support. As is already the case under the Principal Act, financial reporting standards issued by the Board uh, are given the force of law. Uh, the Board must not issue a standard unless it has taken steps to consult persons who would be affected by the issue of the standard. Part 4 also provides for levying licensed auditors and accounting and auditing service providers in order to partially fund the work of the board. The committee recommended that the levy making powers be widened to levy registered audit firms and every person registered or incorporated under a range of statutes, including the Building Societies Act 1993, the Companies Act 1993, and the Limited Partnerships Act 19, uh, 2008. Beg your pardon. Part 4 also provides that the chairperson of the Accounting Standards Review Board continues in office as the chairperson of the External Reporting Board. Thank you, Mr Chair. Mr Chair, I call the Honourable Member Stuart Nash. Thank you very much, Mr Chair. Um, as the Honourable Minister has uh, outlined in her speech, Part 4 really talks about amendments to the Financial Reporting Act and more specifically the, the major uh, grunt of this is the External Reporting Board. There are a couple of things. Obviously, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, such a large piece of legislation does have a, a number of implications for other, other Acts of Parliament, especially those that uh, have a financial basis, a commerce base. Uh, but this is quite a big change, actually, Mr Chair. Because we're talking about the uh, external reporting board, and we're talking about part three here of the Act. So, with, in, in terms of this Act, it's clause 88. Um, continuation of the external reporting board. Now, the external reporting board is a Crown entity for the purposes of section seven of the Crown Entities Act. And what it is it's the same body as the Minister outlined. This is the same body as everyone will know as the Accounting Standards Review Board. Uh, Review board. Um, yep, the Accounting Standards Review Board. Uh, in fact, that, that might have been set up by Aaron Gilmore. I'm not too sure. Maybe I'm wrong there. Um, but members of this board, just so, just, <laughs> but just so uh, people are understanding what this board is about, it has no fewer than four people, no, four, uh, no more than nine members. Um, and the minister, actually, according to the Act, the minister must not recommend a person for appointment as a member of the board unless, in the opinion of the minister, that person is qualified by appointment by reason of his or her knowledge or expertise in business, accounting, auditing, finance and economics. I mean, I'm assuming, of course, that the Minister will seek advice and will be given advice, um, but I'm just sort of, uh, you know, that word qualified, uh, I'm assuming it's, it's quite a subjective word, of course, qualified, but again, I'm assuming the Minister will seek advice, Mr Chair, and there will be people appointed who are incredibly competent, who are independent, and who absolutely know what they're doing. There are a number of them around this country, and uh, I'm sure they'll be lining up to go on this board. The functions of the board, the board has the following functions, and basically uh, to prepare, and if it thinks fit, issue financial report and standards. Again, I have a little bit of concern over that, uh, over that language, especially if it thinks fit. Um, I, do, I don't even know why that's there. I don't know why it just doesn't say to prepare... Uh, and issue financial reporting standards. Um, if it thinks fit is again reasonably subjective, Mr. Mr. Chair. What is the test there? If it thinks fit, does it uh, does it just do they have a meeting around the coffee table and say, well, hmm, I think that we should do this. Uh, there, there shouldn't you should you know? I think it's probably wise if we take out some of the subjective language and just say uh, the board has the following functions to prepare 
and issue financial and reporting standards for the purposes of the Act, the Crown Entities Act, Public Finance Act, Local Government Act, and any Act that, in fact, requires a person to comply with this Act as if the person were a reporting entity. And again, Part B, it says to repair, and again, it uses the term if it thinks fit, um, issue and audit, auditing and assurance standards for the purpose of this Act and another Act. Uh, the Board must act independently. That's most important. Again, we've said time and time again that the purpose of this Act, as is the purpose of a number of Acts that have passed through this House recently, is to restore the confidence in the investing public. This is slightly different because we're talking about Crown entities here. But in a way, uh, it's just as important because taxpayers absolutely need to know that the companies that they own, and, and if we listen to that government uh, over there, then they're going to sell down. So, in fact, you may find, Mr Chair, that this, act, this part of the Act isn't necessary because when they sell down all the state-owned assets, there won't be any need to report on assets owned by the Crown, on state-owned enterprises, because there won't be any left. Who knows? I suspect it might be the case. We do know they're going to sell down state assets. We do know the government has committed to selling down state assets, as we do know, as, uh, as the Prime Minister said today in question time, that he is not ruling out appointing Don Brash as Finance Minister in this term. Did you, did you see Mr English's face when he said that? Oh, Mr English's face just dropped. He thought, oh my God, am I going to be stabbed in the back by Don Brash again? But anyway, back, back, to, uh, back to the Act, Mr Chair. Um, the Board must act independently, which I think is absolutely vital. Oh, well, obviously, as does the committee, uh, and as does every member in this House, because we're all voting for it. Um, ex and I'll, I'll just outline this. Except as expressly provided otherwise in this or another Act, the Board must act independently in performing its statutory functions and duties and exercising its statutory powers under this Act and any other Act. Uh, consultation. The Board, again, we have um, Clause 26 here, Mr Chair. Uh, the Board must not issue a specified standard or an amendment to a specified standard unless the Board has taken reasonable steps to consult with persons or organisations or representatives uh, who, in the opinion of the Board, uh, would be affected by this, by the standard or amendment. It makes complete sense. Thank you very much, Mr Chair. I call the Honourable Member, Claire Curran.